ladies and gentlemen, I am here, and so is the perfume I've been waiting very patiently for from the Chanel Lizot collection. This is Paris, Paris, and I think we in Canada are the last to receive these, but I'm glad that it's arrived, and anytime there's a new Chanel release, it's, it's a big moment for me. I think it's my favorite time of year, more so than Christmas or even my birthday. There's just something special in the air, and there's so much excitement and anticipation in smelling a new Chanel. You know, there are very special perfumes for me. I connect with Chanel in a way that I don't think I do with any others. And um, even the Lazo, you know, for something that is uh, very fresh and light and dainty and watery, which Lazo translate to is, Lazo is water, right? And um, they're just really to, to freshen up these Lazo. Um, but even this collection, they're all really well done. You know, they aren't the most exciting perfumes. They're not heavy or... I don't want to say they're not deep because there is a lot of depth and complexity in these um, simple style of fragrances. So it's a great collection, especially for warmer weather. I typically wouldn't wear these in the, in the harsher climates, in the cold and the robust weather, but during spring and summer, these are excellent. And this is what these are situated for. They're all inspired by um, Coco's travels, her travel destinations to her favorite places in the world. And they're supposed to, I guess in an abstract way, resemble those cities. I, it, it almost seems like they took a page out of Le Labo's city exclusives where they would name a perfume after a city and try and capture that. But um, yeah, I'm all for abstract perfumes, even though it's not figurative, but it does kind of um, add the perfumer's perception to this. But, you know, from the collection, I have a hard time deciphering which is my favorite. I love them all so much. But I think, you know, personally, Venice really connects with me. Those um, kind of that fresh theme on amber. I also really like Edinburgh for its minty, kind of piney, um, citrus rinds to it. It's very fresh, but I did smell this. I, I smelt this very briefly today, so let's unbox this together. And this is a rose patchouli, they call it, which is interesting because in all of the years, and we were talking about this on the live stream recently. If you haven't, catch us on the live stream. They get quite, quite fun and and, um, you know, we're just talking about perfume pretty much, but, um, and, and learning from each other. But it, it's come to light that Chanel's never really focused on a, a rose theme perfume, or they've never really had like a rose solo floor, which is interesting. I mean, they use rose in a lot of their fragrances, such as Coco is a huge rose patchouli, but there's nothing really that was centered around the note of rose, which is, you know, it's it was kind of baffling considering like rose is the, it's considered like the iconic flower that's, it's just used by so many brands everywhere, right? I don't know, I just thought it was, it was weird, but interesting at the same time. All right, so let's open this. I do love the packaging. And, and again, it's Chanel and it's so simple, but it works. Um, looks like they've added a little bit of coloring to this too, which they have throughout the line. Beautiful, right? It's just like this very faint purple. Really nice. I like that. Nice, sophisticated, elegant, simple. Really, really, really classy. We're going to spray Chanel on a Guerlain blotter. We're going to use Guerlain. But, man, there's just something so special about these Chanel's. Okay, 
so it is a little bit sweet and floral. A little bit musky, fresh, slightly watery. You know, I can see uh, Lizzo definitely fits in here. It is watery, clean, uh, a tad soapy. It's definitely wet. It's a big wet rose. Uh, a fresh, wet, dewy springtime rose. Clean, slightly soapy. And again, you know, for this being the first time Chanel's focused on rose, I don't think it's the most unique thing. I've definitely smelled something like this before. Um, considering how much I do love rose and I, I wear a lot of rose perfumes, but this would be something in the style of um, the Dior Dior Privé or um, the, what's it? Uh, Maison Christian Dior Le Col Noir or even Holy Peony. Holy Peony has a little bit of rose in it, but this feels like it, it it would sit nicely along the, those two, or any really, any um, springtime dewy rose. It's just really fresh and clean and sparkling. Let me see what, what the Chanel website says about this. I don't think they added any notes. Okay, introducing an effervescent Fragrance that opens with fresh lemon, okay. Tangerine, then reveals the sparkling, playful character of Rose Damascena. Dashes of spicy pink pepper and woody patchouli at an unexpected twist. Okay, so it's interesting, Rose and patchouli. I love Rose patchouli, it's one of my favorite combos. But when I think Rose and patchouli, I always expect something like um, biting right? Something heavy, something almost clawing, you know, because it's a theme that's that's often worked in, in French perfume and it works, you know, it's used because it works. And I always, you know, I, I prefer my rose patchouli's scratchy, clawy, um, heavier with depth. And this, you know, I don't even notice there's a patchouli in here right now. And I'm sure there is but it's just like a soft patchouli that they use on the base. And this is more fresh than it is woody. It's probably even more, and I say anybody can wear anything, um, man or woman, any gender perfume, but this would, I would say this, this leans more feminine. I think most of them in the range lean more feminine than masculine. They might be even, I don't think they're marketed towards uh, men or women, the inspiration. Let me see here. With Paris Paris, I imagine the sparkling floral composition inspired by Parisian's fiery spirit and effortless elegance. So it's definitely elegant. It is very elegant and it's restrained. It's not a heavy perfume at all. And I like that a lot. I love elegance and restraint, sophisticated. But again, it's, it's a very abstract inspiration Inspired by Parisian's fiery spirit. I'm not sure what what he means by that, but it doesn't feel like a fiery fragrance. It doesn't feel very, I mean, it is spirited, but it doesn't feel fiery like you would expect from a rose patchouli. It feels more like, more like a walk through the park. Where is, give me one moment. And I'll show you. Here's the postcard that was included. And, and, and this probably captures it more than anything. It just looks like, you know, a walk through the park. More than, it, you know, it's, it's inspired by Paris, Paris, but this doesn't smell like a city. It smells more um, picturesque rose. Um, Rose stem, long stemmed rose, a little bit of doing this from the water. It's not biting at all. It's not scratchy. It's very classy. 
But there you go. I like this a lot. I do. Uh, but I'm a big fan of rose perfumes. It is slightly musky. There's a, a, a slight touch of sweetness to this, which I like. And I can't, I can't deny it does remind me of those two um, Christian yours more so than any other rose perfumes. But there you go. Paris, Paris, let us know if you've tried this. Let us know your thoughts. Let us know um, if there's anything else that you can add to this. But uh, I like this. I'm, a, you know, as simple as it is, I love the elegance and the sophistication of Chanel, uh, their style and their aesthetic. I'm never really let down. I'm sure I'm going to love this uh, or, and, and get to know it. But yeah, I'm a big fan of this collection. I'm a big fan of their exclusives and, and pretty much their, their designer line. So there you go. Anyway, it's good seeing you. We'll see you in the comments and we'll talk to you very soon. Bye for now.